fun video. I am participating in the booktube spin tag. This is a really unique idea and the original tag has been made by Rick McDonald. I will link his video down below. You should go check it out because this is such a cool idea that he's come up with. Each person who is participating is supposed to pick 20 books they are interested in reading and submit that list publicly, whether it's on a blog or on um, Instagram, Twitter, uh, or on a booktube channel, which is what I am putting my list out on. And you are supposed to submit your list by January the 31st. And on January the 31st, Rick is going to select a number between one and 20. So whichever book you have that corresponds with the number that he chooses, you're supposed to pick, uh, read that book by March the 31st. So you can, you know, pick a list of books you're excited to read about all of them. And then all you have to do to participate is read that book that is picked one book by March the 31st. And I love making an event out of choosing what book you will be reading next. You know, as readers, we just love to make um, reading as uh, as much of an event as possible. So this was too fun for me to resist and I will show you the 20 books that I have picked. Uh, so the first one is The Moffats by Eleanor Estes. Um, and this is, whenever I look for books that are similar to Betsy Tacey, The Moffats is often recommended. And I forgot I even owned a copy of this until I was unpacking boxes. Um, so it's uh, Eleanor Estes, also wrote uh, Ginger Pie, and there might be a whole Ginger Pie series, um, but just a classic like 50s children's author, which is just one of the um, kind of in the range of children's literature. It's just one of my absolute favorite. Um, and it's about this family, um, Joey, Sylvie, Janie, and Rufus, and all of the kids seem to have their own unique personality. Um, and they're just a really charming family. It's set in New Haven. Um, and it sounds really interesting and uh, I really want to read it. It sounds charming and I think it even has some, yes, some interesting, let's find a good one, just some um, illustrations throughout. Ooh, this is a bit delicate of a copy. You can see the spine is very broken, so I will have to be careful as I, um, as I read it, if that's when I read it. Next, a uh, really fun um, mystery that I read in December was Mr. Churchill's Secretary. It was so gripping. So the second in the series is Princess Elizabeth's Spy. Um, yes, this is the second in the Maggie Hope series that takes place during World War II in England. Um, and uh, let's see, she is no, no longer the secretary to Winston Churchill, uh, and she becomes a spy for MI5. Um, so there's really a lot of uh, nods to that in the first one, so I don't feel like I'm really spoiling much. Um, yes, so we will see what happens with this one. And plus the title, Princess Elizabeth Spy, kind of gives it away. Okay, then third on the list is Love, Ruby, Lavender by Deborah Wiles. This is um, in her, can't remember the name of the series, but uh, the book that I read and absolutely loved um, was... Uh, each Little Bird That Sings. I forgot the title there for a moment. It's set in a small town in Mississippi, so I felt very nostalgic reading it. And this one um, is about Ruby Lavender, whose grandmother uh, goes to Hawaii for a visit, and so she's stuck in boring old Hallelujah, Mississippi, Ruby Lavender is, with nothing to do except read to her chickens. Um, and what I like is there's some interesting little... Um, just little tidbits in there, like a coupon... Um, and some letters back and forth. So a bit of a multimedia experience and really looking forward to reading this if that is the one that is chosen. Then a middle grade author that I keep seeing that I am almost positive I would love because he seems similar to Jack Gantos whose, um, whose books make me really laugh and that is Richard Peck. So he has the Long Way to Chicago family trilogy. I definitely want to read this read that, but this one is The Teacher's Funeral. So I think it's basically the kids plotting a coup to make the teacher leave. Um, and it just sounds really, really funny. And um, the first sentence even just really caught my eye. The Teacher's Funeral, what does it say? Yes, if your teacher has to die, August isn't a bad time of year for it. You know August, the corn is earing, the tomatoes are ripening on the vine, the clover's in full bloom, there's a little less evening now, and that's a warning. You want to live every day twice over because you'll be back in the jailhouse of school before the end of the month. So just a really funny writing style. 
Uh, next is The Living Mountain by Nan Shepard. This was published after she had passed away. Uh, and this is about a mountain in Scotland, the Cairn, oh, it's a region of mountains, the Cairnorn Mountains of Scotland. And it's just supposed to be just unbelievably beautiful prose, her writing about being, feeling just extremely drawn to this certain piece of land. Sounds really wonderful. And in the essay, The Gifts of Reading by Robert McFarlane, this is one of the three books that he names as like very, very special books. Next is a book that I should have read a while back, and that is When Valleys Bloom Again by Pat Jean Davis, uh, a novel of World War II. This is a friend that I know, and she has written this. It's a wartime romance, and it's a Christian romance, so I just always feel a little bit nervous going into like Christian fiction. Um, but I should try to read more of it because I know there is going to be some good Christian fiction out there. Um, and so, yeah, I want to try to read this. Um, yeah, hopefully I would enjoy that. And then uh, A Month in the Country by J.L. Carr, a really slim little volume I've been meaning to read for a couple of years. It's not, it's like 103 pages. Um, and it is about a soldier who's recovering from the war and he comes to help with um, a medieval wall painting. Um, and uh, the Village Church of Ox Oxgoodby. Uh, so I think that would be really interesting to kind of see this restoration of his spirit through working on a beautiful piece of art. Um, yeah, and I hear very good things about this. And then uh, The Moonflower Vine by, Moonflower Vine by Jetta Carlton is a modern classic, and it's about a family um, who live in the Midwest on a farm, and they have five daughters. I'm pretty sure it's five daughters. And it's just about their family um, living on this farm. So I think it'll be some kind of like domestic uh, fiction. And uh, I love the notion of that, you know, following this family. And I have the audiobook of that. So if I read that, I will be reading it as an audiobook. And then Victoria the Queen by Julia Baird. I would love to just really enjoy um, going through an audiobook biography. And this is one available available through my library. I never even see any holds on it. I currently have it checked out, but I have a bunch of audiobooks checked out through my library, so I hadn't started listening to it, but this could be the good motivation to do it. And it is 23 hours. So honestly, as far as audiobooks go, that's not as long as it could be. Like the Wheel of Time books are around 30 hours. Um, so it seems more doable uh, than some. And then uh, C.S. Lewis, A Life by Alistair McGrath, another biography that I was surprised to see my library had. And I think Alistair McGrath, uh, just from what I looked up about him, he seemed like the perfect person to write a biography about C.S. Lewis. I do know a bit about C.S. Lewis from watching Shadowlands, the uh, biopic about um, the time that he was married to Joy, uh, his wife. But uh, other than that, I don't know that much about him. So I would love to learn more. And then I have The Royal Secret by Lucinda Riley. I love uh, Lucinda Riley's Seven Sisters series that I have read the first three books in and want to read more by her. So this is about someone who in their will, um, an actor at the age of 95, um, leaves something really shocking in his will. Uh, so yes, Lucinda Riley is always a really gripping read and I would love to read that. Then I have Begin Again by Ursula Orange. Lovers of modern classics keep mentioning Ursula Orange, and this is about four friends in Oxford and their time, I'm pretty sure their time as students there. I could have it wrong, but that's what I think it's about. And um, the Kindle copy is, does not cost that much on Amazon, so I would maybe get a copy of that. And then I have a collection of fairy tales by Anne Isabella, Isabel Thackeray Ritchie. This is William Makepeace Thackeray's daughter. And she was a best-selling novelist in the Victorian era. And she has a collection of fairy tales, which I found out about her because she wrote um, one of the stories is a Cinderella retelling. So you know I'm going to be interested. And they are all set in the Victorian era. So they were contemporary retellings in her day. And it just sounds fascinating. And I've heard also particularly good things about her Bluebeard retelling. So I would be really interested in reading this. I have a Kindle copy of this. And then I have um, this book by Maud Hart Lovelace. And if that name rings a bell, yes, the Betsy Tacy series. This is Early Candlelight. 
and it is historical fiction about Minnesota in the 1830s and Fort Snelling specifically. Uh, so I am really curious to read this. I have only read, you know, the Deep Valley series by uh, Maud Hart Lovelace. So I would be interested to read something very different from her. And then I have Anne's House of Dreams by Ellen Montgomery. This is uh, the next one in the series that I have to read. I made it through Anne of Windy Poplars. That's the one that tripped me up last time. Uh, so this time I did make it through Anne of Windy Poplars and it's not for lack of uh, desire that I haven't picked up Anne's House of Dreams. Um, so I just love these source books covers and they're just so soft and delightful to hold in your hands. Then another middle grade I have is The Shakespeare Stealer by Gary Blackwood. This is set in um, uh, the time that Shakespeare was writing plays and um, there's a kid who is there that someone wants him to steal uh, one of Shakespeare's plays. And so it sounds like a really cool setup for a middle grade book. And then I have Generous Women by Earl Hamner Jr. I heard about this from Tanya at the Sampler Girls uh, channel. And it is the guy who wrote um, the, the Waltons TV series. Uh, so it's about his family and the women in his family. It's just supposed to be a really touching, moving read and something I would love to pick up. Sounds like just a book that would really pull on my heartstrings. And then The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. Uh, this is a book by India Holton. She's a uh, debut author and it is a historical romance with some fantasy elements in it. And I think it also has a lot of mystery elements in it. It just sounds really special and unique um, and just really lovely. So I would love to read that. And I do have an um, ARC e-arc copy of it uh, through NetGalley and I'm really wanting to get to that sooner rather than later. And then lastly, a The Story of Lily Dawson by Catherine Crow. This is a Cinderella kind of story that is a also a Victorian novel. Um, and Catherine Crow, I've only read a ghost story by her, but I loved the ghost story so much that I ordered this and um, I would be really interested to read this. Um, shipwrecked as a young girl, middle-class Lily Dawson is kidnapped by smugglers and forced to work as their servant. Um, so she flees ca captivity eventually and has to navigate an outside world. Um, so it says it has pirates, outlaws, murder, mistaken identity, lust, and betrayal. So sounds like a very sensational Victorian novel. So now I just want to read all of these, but um, I'm really excited to take part in the booktube spin tag. So thank you, Rick, for creating it. And I will let you all know which number was picked in a future video. And I hope you all have a lovely day and I will be back for another video soon. Bye.